Hi, it's Katrina. From ancient fortresses taken over by the Romans to mysterious advanced societies that disappeared, here are nine archaeological discoveries of ancient mountain civilizations. Number 9. Masada Masada is an ancient stone fortress located high above the Dead Sea, 1,300 feet above sea level. The 840-acre complex sits on a tall, isolated rock plateau in Israel, and the fortress was built between 37 and 31 BC by Herod the Great, king of Judea himself. At first, Masada served as a refuge and a winter retreat for Herod. The walled fortress was the perfect defensive place with water-filled cisterns, an armory, barracks, a palace, and more. The palace had a semicircular terrace hanging over the edge of the cliff, offering views of the surrounding areas. After Herod died and the Romans annexed Judea, they took over Masada and turned it into a garrison. In 66 AD, around 75 years after Herod's death, the Great Revolt of the Jews broke out. A group of Jewish rebels, called the Sicarii, took over the fortress. They held out there for three years, where they were joined by families fleeing Jerusalem after the city fell. Once Jerusalem was destroyed, the Romans turned to Masada to take it down. A legion of 8,000 Roman soldiers surrounded the place, where 960 rebels were holding out, including many women and children. The fortress was under siege for several months, and finally the Romans built a ramp to tear down the fortress wall. At that point, everyone inside Masada decided that they would take their own lives rather than fall into Roman hands and become slaves. When the Romans tore down the wall, the city was eerily quiet, and then they found the remains of the people. Only two women and five children survived by hiding in the cistern, who later told the Romans what had happened. It was abandoned over time for nearly 13 centuries, until it was rediscovered in 1828. Today, Masada is one of Israel's top tourist destinations and is a national park and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 8. Gamsutol The Russian Republic of Dagestan, located along the Caspian Sea, is home to the abandoned mountaintop village of Gamsutol. Nobody knows for sure when it was built, but it's clear by the appearance of the now crumbling ruins that the former settlement is very, very old. During the Middle Ages, Gamsutl served as a fortified castle for a nomadic ethnic group called the Avars. The village, which sits at nearly 5,000 feet above sea level, is difficult to access because it's surrounded by steep cliffs, making it an ideal place for avoiding enemies. Gamsutl thrived well into the 20th century, with a post office, school, hospital, shops, and even a road leading to the village. But people eventually began leaving in search of better economic opportunities, and Gamsutl largely cleared out around 40 years ago. The very last resident passed away in 2015, and only around 70 of the 300 original buildings remain, falling further into disrepair with time. Today, visitors are free to walk around the site as they please, as long as they are willing and able to make the challenging trek to get there. And now for number 7, but first, it's time for a giveaway! I wanted to give a big thank you to all of you for supporting this channel. We are having giveaways over the next few days, and winners will be able to choose a t-shirt from our Origins Explained merch. All you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment with hashtag Origins Explained to let me know you want to participate. More details will be in the description box and pinned comment below. Number 7. Castellón Alto Nicknamed the Andalusian Acropolis, Castellón Alto is a Bronze Age fortified settlement on the Iberian Peninsula in southern Spain that belonged to the Argaric culture. It dates back to around 1900 BC and is located in what is now Granada's Altiplano region. The Argaric culture thrived between 2200 BC and 1550 BC. They are famous for their advanced expertise using bronze especially the manufacture of weapons, as well as making pottery and ceramics. They also mined silver and gold and developed a sophisticated society. The Argaric people buried the dead in individual graves, typically beneath the family home, rather than in communal tombs like many other societies of the time. There was a class hierarchy which was seemingly divided into upper and middle classes, as well as lower class which was drastically less privileged than the others. Someone's social ranking was associated with which level terrace their house was situated on. The community leaders lived at the top of the settlement in an area called the Acropolis. The fortified settlement was built near the current small village of Galera. Now known as Castellón Alto, it is one of just four remaining Argaric sites. 
Houses were cut out of the rock in a series of terraces, and each house had a low stone foundation with posts made of wood that would hold together the rest. Castellón Alto was mysteriously and suddenly abandoned around 1600 BC, after just 300 years of occupancy. The likely reason for this is the depletion of trees nearby, which the Argaric people used for fuel and construction. Number 6. Timgad Timgad, also called Thamugadi and nicknamed the Algerian Pompeii, was a Roman city and military settlement in Algeria's Aures Mountains. Located in what is now the province of Numidia, Timgad was founded around 100 AD by the Emperor Trajan. Built at the convergence of six Roman roads, it was once a thriving agricultural and commercial center. The settlement thrived for centuries, peaking in the 3rd century with a population of around 15,000. There were over a dozen baths, an impressive library, and other magnificent structures, including public buildings and the 20-foot-high Arch of Trajan. That was the good news. The bad news is that Timgad's wealth made it a prime target for invaders. The Vandals raided Timgad in 430, and subsequent attacks progressively weakened the city. It was never restored to its former glory, and during the 8th century, residents left it deserted. Today, Timgad contains some of the best-preserved Roman ruins, thanks to the sands of the Sahara Desert, which buried the abandoned city, protecting its architecture for centuries. Scottish nobleman James Bruce and his team of explorers rediscovered Timgad in 1765, making them the first Europeans at the site in centuries. They uncovered and then reburied the structures, and their claims were widely disregarded and written off as outrageous by British society. Then, in 1875, British consul Robert Playfair visited the ruins at Timgad and added to Bruce's records with observations of his own. Between 1881 and 1960, the French controlled and excavated the site. Today, the city's architecture and artwork, including colorful mosaics, remain in remarkable condition, and even the ruts left behind by the heavy traffic that once traversed its streets are still visible. Number 5. Cliff Palace Located in Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado, the Cliff Palace is North America's largest cliff settlement. Occupied from 1190 to 1260 AD, it was home to an ancient Paleo-Indian people known as the Ancestral Pueblins, or the Anasazi. The sandstone dwelling consists of over 150 rooms and more than 20 sunken circles which were used for religious rituals, called kivas. It's one of over 600 cliff dwellings throughout the park nestled into the side of the mountain. Cliff Palace is the largest among them by far, with most others containing between one and five rooms. Due to its size, researchers believe the Cliff Palace served as an administrative and social center. The Cliff Palace was abandoned around 1300 and was rediscovered in 1888 by ranchers Richard Wetherill and Charlie Mason. After that, many things were stolen and taken from the site, and the place is slowly deteriorating after being exposed to the elements for so long. It's not really clear why it was abandoned, but it was most likely due to a combination of factors like drought, massive flooding, diminishing resources, and violence. After putting in that much effort into building the site, it is sad that the people were unable to use it for very long. Now it is protected by the government and is open to the public. Have you ever been here? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. La Ciudad Perdida La Ciudad Perdida, Spanish for the Lost City, is an archaeological site situated deep in Colombia's Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains. Researchers believe that the Tayrona people founded the remote mountainside settlement around 650 years earlier than the famed Machu Picchu, around 800 AD. The site, which also goes by the indigenous name of Teyuna, can only be accessed on foot via an arduous journey through the dense jungle and up some 1,200 stone steps. You have to be in pretty good shape to visit this site. It consists of several circular plazas, a series of tiled roads, and 169 carved terraces. Ciudad Perdida flourished for nearly 1,000 years before its residents succumbed to disease brought over by the Spanish, although the two cultures never clashed face to face. The diseases spread much faster than the Spanish themselves, who probably never even imagined the level of destruction they brought with them besides their weapons. A group of treasure hunters discovered Ciudad Perdida in 1972. Shortly after, valuable artifacts such as ceramic urns and gold figurines emerged on the black market, prompting archaeologists to travel to the site in 1976. Experts reconstructed the settlement between then and 1982, before the long-running Colombian armed conflict rendered it unsafe to visit. 
Today, the lost city is considered safe after reopening to tourism in 2005. The Colombian Army patrols the area, and now everyone who wants to can visit the lost city. Number 3. Craco Located on a summit 1,312 feet tall, about 25 miles inland in southern Italy's Matera province, the ghost town of Craco dates as far back as the 8th century BC. The Greeks moved in around 540 AD, calling the town Monte d'Oro. But little is known about Krakow's early days, and it's most famous as a medieval town, during which time it remained largely under feudal control. During the 13th century, the city flourished with a castle and a university. Over time, the city got even better. Four palazzi, or palatial buildings, emerged by the 15th century, and Krakow also became known for its wonderful churches. Krakow's population peaked at over 1,700 residents in 1532. The plague struck the town the following century, causing hundreds of deaths, but Krakow proved resilient and stuck around for a few more centuries. A series of unfortunate events began taking a serious toll on the settlement's social and economic conditions during the late 19th century. Cholera epidemics, strained trade relations and war with France, plant disease that killed grapes, plummeting agricultural prices, earthquakes, landslides, and widespread civil unrest all contributed to Krakow's ultimate downfall. Many residents left for economic opportunities in North America. The remaining inhabitants were relocated to the nearby village of Krakow Pesquiera starting in 1963 due to the ever-present dangers caused by landslides. Today, the site is open to tourists. The Krakow Society offers guided tours led by members with close personal ties to the former town helping to bring its history alive. Number 2. Sewell Ghost Town Informally known as the City of Stairs, Sewell is a former mining town that sits over 7,220 feet above sea level. Located in the Chilean Andes, directly above the world's largest underground copper mine, it was built on a steep, barren slope. The remote, abandoned settlement is only accessible by walking or hiking there. The Braden Copper Company constructed Sewell to house mine workers after finding copper reserves in the region. There was a lot of copper, but it was very hard to get to. It's nicknamed the City of Stairs after the Escalera Central, a large central staircase that led from a nearby railway station to the town. The houses were painted in vibrant hues as a cheerful contrast to the dreary backdrop of the high-altitude environment. To prevent residents from being overtaken by boredom, the company built shops, a social club, playgrounds, and a movie theater. Sewell peaked in 1960 with a population of over 15,000. Over the years, two major tragedies, an avalanche and a fire, claimed hundreds of lives. El Humo, or The Smoke, killed 355 mine workers when a fire broke out at El Teniente Mine. To this day, it's considered Chile's worst-ever metallic mining accident. But Sewell's demise ultimately resulted from the nationalization of the mining industry under the Allende government. The newly established National Copper Corporation of Chile began moving families out of Sewell in 1977. Once everyone was gone, it started demolishing the town. But the Chilean government saw Sewell as worth saving for history's sake and halted its destruction. It declared the town a national monument in 1998, and in 2006 it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Today, what's left of Sewell, including 50 restored buildings, stands as one of the best-preserved company mining towns in the world. Number 1. Le Old Town and Palace The former royal structure known as Le Palace and the settlement it overlooks, called Le Old Town, survive as one of just a few rare examples of an intact urban Himalayan settlement. Located in the Indian Himalayas in the Ladakh region, the first fortifications at Leh included a small royal residence and three Buddhist temples, built during the 15th century. Built along the mountain ridge high above the town, the place had a great view of the land below. Leh became the kingdom of Ladakh's capital at the turn of the 17th century. During this time, King Senge Nam Gayal built the nine-story structure now known as Leh Palace, as well as massive earthen walls that surrounded the old town. The royal family lived in Lay Palace until the mid-19th century, when they fled following the invasion and conquest by Dogra forces. Very little of the palace's original interior survives today, and the structure is in a serious state of decay. During its better days, the royal family lived in the palace's upper floors, while stables and storerooms made up much of the lower levels. The palace houses a museum featuring a collection of artifacts, including jewelry, ornaments, ceremonial dresses, 
crowns, and intricate, brightly colored paintings called Thangka, which date back over 450 years. Visitors are welcome throughout the structure and on the roof, where they can catch a glimpse of the panoramic surroundings once enjoyed by the region's elite. People still live in the old town surrounding Lei Palace, but much has changed since its glory days. After roads were constructed during the 1960s, effectively shutting down former trade routes, the town's gates and walls were mostly demolished. Around 200 stone and timber houses still stand within what's left of the 17th century walls. Many wealthier residents ultimately left due to the struggling infrastructure, including a substandard water supply and inadequate drainage facilities, leaving the remaining, less fortunate inhabitants to maintain Lay's surviving historic structures. A lack of funding, flash floods, and other factors have contributed greatly to the site's architectural decline. The Archaeological Survey of India is currently working to restore the palace before its crumbling ruins are lost to history. Thanks for watching! Have you ever visited any of these places? Would you like to learn about more fascinating remote abandoned settlements throughout the world? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!